Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Hi, Jared. Hi, Clark. Hi, Luku. If you guys can hear me okay, put it into the chat, let me know. And if you can see me and see the screen all right, put it in and let me know. Welcome, welcome to the session today. How are you all doing today? Uh, what I like to do is also, you know, as we give it a couple of minutes for everyone else to stream in, put it into the chat. Let me know where are you joining me from? You can see it's nice and dark outside. It's actually only 5 p.m. GMT plus 8. Very stormy weather right now, so it's crazy. Fantastic. Good to see all of you here today. I hope you've been trading well. I hope the markets have been treating you well. We've got everyone from everywhere. Hi, Sumit. Hi, Te. Hi, Cecilio. I'll give it a minute or two before we get started. <clears throat> and hey, if you have any questions, any trading related questions, you would like um, me to help you with, please let me know. Good stuff, good stuff. Today we are here with the Tick Mill webinar. We will be going through a live analysis session. So I will be sharing with you some thoughts, ideas, uh, views about the markets. So let me, um, you know, let's get ready for that. Hey, Peter, how are you doing? Hey, Joyce. Hey, Bando. <clears throat> Good to see everyone here nice and early. One more minute and we'll get started. I hope you have, you know, been trading well. Hey, Etienne, I do recognize some names. So it's good to see a couple of you coming back to the session again. Hey, Gary. Very nice to see everyone. Well, very nice to see everyone's names. So if you're ready to get started, let me know. Let's get going. Ready to go? Good to go? Put it into the chat. Try and keep it a little bit interactive. Okay, so let's get started now. Welcome again, everyone. Thank you for turning up. Uh, this is the Take Mill Live Analysis session where I will be going through with you, you know, what's happening in the market, what has happened in the market, what is likely to happen, and what could be coming up. All right. So I'll be I will be sharing with you some thoughts, ideas, uh, possible setups with um, in terms of what's happening in the markets if you have any particular pairs or commodities or anything you'd like me to look at please put it into chat and let me know i do have a set of um, the majors that i'll go through <clears throat> so if you have anything in particular that you'd like me to look at or a trade idea that you had before put it in the chat let me know i'll be happy to review that together with you and everyone else but before we get started, a quick disclaimer is that any material, the material provided is for information purpose only and should not be considered as an investment advice. The views, opinions, or information expressed in the text below belong solely to the author and not to the author's employers, organization, committee, or other group or individual or company. All right. So what it means is that as I share with you possible setups, ideas, views of the markets, if you are going to be jumping into any trades, please, please, please make sure you do three of three things, right? One, check your analysis. Make sure it's something that you're comfortable with, right? Make sure it's a trade or an idea that you're comfortable with. Check your leverage. Make sure you're not over trading. Make sure you're trading the right sizes and check your margin level as well, right? You're not, not entering in too many trades. Because what happens is that I will be going through all the different pairs of identifying possible buying or selling opportunities. 
with all that, you don't want to be jumping into every trade, right? You don't want to be thinking everything is a good idea, jumping into everything, and then, you know, you end up with too many trades. So with that said, you know, let's go through that quick introduction. My name is Jin, right? I Jin. Most of you know me as Jin. I, my name is Jin Dao. If you have any questions, I have been trading for the last, well, almost 10, more than 10 years right now. I have previously managed a professional FX fund as well. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to share with you my trading journey and experience. Okay, so let's get started. I know the question will come up. I know the question will come up at some point where um, everyone's going to ask or someone's going to ask, is this recorded? Where can I get a recording of this? I've missed something. Where do you find more information? You can jump on to the, let me do that. I've put a link into the chat. So you can jump into the Tickmill um, webinar series, you have all the information there, a lot of good, very good educational videos, right? How to improve your stop loss, take profit placements, how to prepare for the week, uh, price action strategies, it's all there, right? So I, what I always like to say is that, you know, if you want to find out more, you want to learn a little bit more, check out the sessions, jump onto the videos, go through the videos, it's always nice, even if you have gone through the videos, go through it again, quick refresher, just so that it refreshes your memory. You make sure, a lot of times we learn something, but we don't apply it, right? So you make sure that you apply it onto your trading strategy as well. Okay, so the link is there. Make sure you check out the TakeMail channel, especially the series, the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. Um, and also while you're there, click that like, click that subscribe button. It really helps us with the um, YouTube algorithm as well. All right. So um, I see a quick question there. Let's check out G-U-N-Z-D. -N I will do that. Okay. So how I approach the markets, right? How I trade first, I look a lot at the fundamentals first, right? For me, I look at the news, I look at the fundamentals, it gives me an idea of where prices should be heading, right? I look at the news, fundamentals, where prices should be heading. Then I go into the charts, I look into um, the technical analysis to identify. For example, if I think that pound dollar, the GU should be heading towards upside based on the economics, based on the sentiment, then I'll look into the charts to identify if, it's a good setup for a buying opportunity. Say, for example, it's trending towards the downside, then I would say, hey, economics or fundamentals tell me that it should be going up. Technicals tell me that it's going down right now. What I'll do is I'll wait it out for it to turn, for the technical setup to apply, then I'll jump into a trade to trade towards upside. Okay, so I use, for me, I do use a combination of both the fundamentals and the technicals combine it together to find that trade setup rather than just fundamentals or rather than just technical side. Okay. So because of that, so because of that, what I do or big habit of mine is I always check out Forex Factory, right? Forex Factory is one of the first charts I jump onto every single day, just because I want to know what's happening in the markets. Okay, so just make sure you have all your filters on. Uh, you have all the news available there. Hey, Jamilu, how are you doing? Good to see you here as well. All right. So I jump into all of that. I jump into all, look at all the news. And you can see that today, nothing much. But hey, let's not look at what's, happened, what's happening today first. I want to show you what happened last week. Okay, so let's jump into last week, do a quick review of last week because it gives us an idea of where we have come up to. Okay, so just checking last week was, yeah, this is the 31st, okay. Big news, we had big, big news last week. On Tuesday, the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, increased interest rates from a 2.6% by 25 basis points to a 2.85%. Okay, a small increase from the RBA, um, what they actually did was they increased it 
we actually saw the Aussie dollar move up a little bit, but then overall traded lower from that um, after that news release. That wasn't a major news event there. What we had on Wednesday was the ADP non-farm payrolls. We had some New Zealand employment numbers released as well. Stronger employment change, but also unemployment rate climbing uh, a bit higher than expected, staying at that 3.3%. The main focus, the big event happened last week where the US Federal Reserve increased interest rates from a 3.25% to a 4%, right? They increased it by 75 basis points. And I want to do a quick review here of what happened at that news event. So this happened at 2 a.m. GMT plus 8. US Federal Reserve increased rates from 3.25 to a 4.75 basis point increase. And what we saw was looking at the charts here on the dollar. Okay, I'll show it to you on Thursday at 2 a.m. I see a question there, Casbert. I will go through that. Just give me a couple of moments. Let's look at what happened here on the um, dollar index with the Federal Reserve news release. Okay, so at 2 a.m., they increased rates by 75 basis points. And we actually saw the dollar index was at 111.36. It dropped strongly down towards that 110.43 level, right? Dollar weakened almost straight away towards the downside because during the release of the interest rate decision in the statement, you see a statement here being released at the same time, it said that... Um, the Federal Reserve was ready to adjust their policy, right? Ready to adjust their policy based on the upcoming um, economic data on whether they're going to slow down further rate increases or future rate increases, right? So market looked at it as the Federal Reserve saying, hey, we're looking to slow down, right? Based on economics. So they said they were looking to slow down. We saw that big drop towards that one one. 0.43 level and once it hit that level you can see at 230 i know i'm jumping between screens so bear with me at 230 the us fomc press conference happened the press conference is where the chairperson chair powell sends their answers questions from the media about the markets about their views about their um, decision and about the markets during the press conference, what was said, I think I can bring it up here. Uh, I think I've lost it. Okay, you can see here that um, the main line that caused here. Okay, here. Ultimate rate level higher than previously expected. That one line, ultimate rate level higher than previously expected. What it means is that they were anticipating interest rates for the US to top out at 5%. That one line saying that it could be higher than previously expected shifted the overall sentiment in market. Now everyone's thinking that the Fed Reserve or the FOMC could raise rates beyond 5%, right? Beyond that 5%. And that's why we actually saw it drop, but then almost straight away as the news, as that statement got said, the dollar index pushed up, right? At 3M, it pushed up all the way from 110.43 all the way, and it cl continued climbing all the way through Thursday into 113.18 or 113.15, right? So we saw a good strength in the dollar, it hit a key level and then it started retracing down. I'll tell you what happened here as it dropped strongly from 112.37 all the way down to right now at 110.47. All right. Hey, Ariel, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Okay. So I will do that. Pound, yen, and US dollar. Uh, US yen, we'll do that, okay? So with that, what we also had on, um, oops, I lost it. Let me go scroll back. On Thursday as well was the Bank of England. So you had a lot of questions. A lot of you have questions about um, the pound dollar. 
we actually saw some volatility on the pound dollar because of this um, interest rate news from the Bank of England. Right? So the pound at 8 p.m. GMT plus 8, Bank of England increased rates as well, 75 basis points from a 2.25% to a 3%. Okay, so rate increases from the UK as well. But in this case, what they actually said was they have increased rates. They might be very close to the top of interest rates um, level. And also the UK might be heading into a deep recession. Okay, so it doesn't sound very positive for the pound dollar or for that decision. And that's why with that news release, as I show you the pound dollar here, let's take out that for now. On Thursday, as that got released, it dropped strongly down towards that 1.1155 1, 1, 1. 1, 5, 5 support level. Okay, we saw that big drop down. And then as the dollar weakened, we saw this push back up again. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the central bank decisions we had last week. And then the last one that I'll show you now in terms of what happened last week was on Friday, on Friday at 8.30 GMT plus 8, we saw US non-farm employment change data. Put it into the chat, let me know. Did you guys, do you, did or do you guys pay attention to the non-farm employment change data on Friday? Do you normally pay attention? Do you normally trade the non-farm payrolls on the first Friday of every month? Or is that some a news decision that you kind of skip through? Put it into the chat, let me know. Share out with the small positions, good stuff. You should always, um, with high volatility events, I would say, you know, I always would size down just to, I would trade it, but I would size it down. So a small position is a good idea. Joyce traded it, fantastic. Okay, so I hope, you know, I hope that as we go through these sessions, you start learning how to, uh, pay attention to these news events because this brought around a lot of volatility. Okay, uh, you can see that the non farm payroll employment change data was 315, it got revised, it was actually 263, so it got revised up. Expected 197 came out at 261. Okay, so it's a good news, it's a good news, but what you also notice is that it was the slowest growth, right? So previously we had 263, we had big numbers before. This was one of the slowest growth we've had since um, December, 2020, okay? And also more importantly is that unemployment rate went up. It went from a 3.5 to a 3.7%, okay? So we saw an increase in unemployment rate, which is why we saw, again, back to the charts, a big drop. You can see this was the news on Friday, big drop towards the downside on the dollar index, which applied across the board. The dollar weakened and it actually pushed across the board, everything gained against the dollar because two reasons. One, um, slowest growth or slowest growth in employment numbers since December 2020. Two, increase in um, the unemployment rate. And lastly, we've had so much volatility through the week. This was the end of the week. We saw a series of activity that which looks like it was profit taking. Okay, so that's why you see price went all the way down. It actually came all the way back towards Monday's level. So Monday started at about this 110.76 level, 0.75 level. Friday pretty much ended at that same level. So it went all the way up, hit 113 point, almost 113.20 and reverse all the way back down, pretty much squaring off the week. Okay, so that's what happened last week. What could happen this week? I'll show you here what could happen. Good thing is that this week might be a lot easier to trade. Why do I say that? Because 
if you look into just quickly scrolling through the news, nothing much today, no big news events for today. For tomorrow as well, not a lot, right? Uh, we do have RBA government law speaking. We do have congressional elections, but these are not typically big price movers. The main thing that's going to happen for this week is on Thursday. So I want to, you guys, you know, if you have a calendar in front of you, if you have something, take note, watch out for this on Thursday, 10th of November, 9 p 9.30 p.m. GMT plus 8. Big news event. If you have any trades um, right now, all the way to Thursday, I would suggest try and close it out before the news event. If you haven't got a trade, try and avoid entering a trade leading up to this news event, right? Because this is the CPI data for the US, inflationary data for the US. It was an 8.2 year on year, expected to be 8%. So it's looking to for CPI to drop a little bit. But if I show you this, last month in October, it was an 8.3, expected 8.1, came out 8.2. So we actually did see inflation increase again, um, September, 8.5, expected 8.1, expected to drop, but stay at 8.3. And then August dropped a little bit. July still climbing. June was still climbing. So it looks like inflation in the US might be um, at that 8 or 8.1 level or even 8.2 level. I don't think we're looking for a big change in terms of the CPI data. And if we do see a um, strong number, right? A small change, small to no change in CPI. That's going to give the Federal Reserve more confidence, right? More confidence to continue on with their rate increases, right? Continue on with their current path of rate increases. So because of that, you want to watch out. Could be a high volatility event if we do see CPI being still quite high then we might see that dollar strength come back into play very strongly. Okay, so I'm watching out for that event there on Thursday. And then on to Friday, the next one to pay attention to is the pound with their GDP number still in that negative territory was a minus 0.3%, expected to be a minus 0.4. Terrible news for the pound dollar and hey, like I was telling you, if I'm looking at the fundamentals, terrible news on the pound dollar, I'm still looking for that downside. Right? I'm still looking for the downside because the Bank of England has said they might be close to the top of the interest rate path. They are looking at the deeper recession for the UK. And now GDP on Friday could signal further negative territory for the pound dollar. Okay, so now let's look at the charts and all your requests from earlier on. So the first one that asked uh, was Noble with a pound, a dollar, and a pound Kiwi. So let's look at a pound dollar first. <clears throat> I'll zoom it out. And remember, this is on H1 time frame. What I'll do is I'll look at it on first on H4. <clears throat> okay, I'll look at it on H4 time frame first. I'll identify my <clears throat> support resistance levels, right? The boundaries. Then I'll look into the H1 to identify possible setup levels. <clears throat> My voice is going a little bit, so bear with me. All right, so we can see here straight away, we have a key support level here at about 1.1155. Let's hit that level, it's bounced back up. And also a key resistance level here at about 1.1636, all right? So these two levels um, over the last couple of days or last couple last week, we've seen it hit and track lower. We've seen it hit and bounce back up. Right now, because of that dollar weakness, because of the dollar weakness, we're seeing the pound dollar trade higher. We're seeing the pound dollar trade higher. So now if I looked at it on the H1 time frame, all right? Uh, with this price right now at 1.1445, you know, I'll put a line right there. You can see that price is 
testing that level. It's testing that level. And last time it broke below this point was that rejection. You can see that pin bar there rejecting the 1.1445 level, likely to trade towards the downside. Right now, don't do anything yet. We'll wait for the hour to close, which is in about five minutes, but we're looking for possible further upside on the pound dollar. What I'll be looking for is for price to close above this resistance level now, right? If you can close above that resistance, I could be looking for a buying opportunity. You could see towards the next resistance level of one one of about 1.1635. Your stop loss could be relatively tight at about 40 to 50 pips. You're looking at a one is to three risk reward ratio. One is a 3.5 risk reward ratio towards the upside there on the pound dollar. Okay, so that's because of that dollar weakness that we're seeing. I'll show you the dollar weakness chart. Looking to track lower. Um, just share with you here on the dollar index is that it we can see that on <clears throat> Thursday last week, price came down, tested that 110.42 level and bounced strongly up. Right now, it's testing that level again, right? It's testing that level again. The key question here will be, can price break below this support level? If it does break below this support level, then the next key support, there's a lot of other levels there, but the next key support will be at 109.55, okay? So we need to see what happens here on the dollar index. If it does bounce back up from here, then we're gonna see some dollar strength come back into play. I think in my view, we're gonna see it consolidate at this level, possibly for today, right? We might see a bit of a bounce up and down. We might see price fluctuate within this area, but I think we might, see a bit of a consolidation because there is no big news drivers to push it back up, all right? So with that, again, back to the pound dollar, I think that we could see this push up. It does need to break above this 1.1450 level. So about 1.1466 or 1.1470 to trade it up towards that resistance. What I do think later in the week on the H4 timeframe, what I'll be looking for is a possible, if we do see the dollar strength come back into play, if we do see the GDP numbers for the UK being in that negative territory again, then again, a possible selling opportunity there. So I'll be looking for this in general, a move up, a test, a reject. I'll be looking for that selling opportunity back down again rejecting that 1.1640 level to turn down possibly quite strongly back towards that 1.1155 support level. All right, so I've broken this trade into the short-term trade for today, for tomorrow, maybe onto Wednesday, and then the longer-term trade, looking for that dollar strength to come back into play, looking for that rejection of that 1.1630 resistance level. Okay, so Noble, I hope I answered your question there on the um, pound dollar. All good. And if you know, for everyone else as well, if you have any questions, please let me know. But I hope you guys um, understand the pound dollar there. Fantastic. Okay, then the next one is on the pound Kiwi. Very similar, so you can see here on the H4 time frame, pound Kiwi reacted to that one, 1 1.9136 level, 9 1.9135 level, okay? And I would drag this right across just to show you that's a key level there, right? A very key level there. So I'll be, I like to see it bounce at this point. Why is it trading higher? pound strength, right? We've just seen the pound strength pushing it up. Uh, what you'll also notice is that previous levels here at 1.9381. So I wouldn't do anything now unless it breaks above this resistance level, this near-term resistance level, then we could see it trade 
towards the upside, right? Look at C trade towards the upside. Um, <clears throat> let me do this as well, just to highlight to you guys. You can see that we're at currently at a 23.6 Fib level. I do think that if we break up above this point, then we could actually see price come up towards this 61.8 level at that 1.9689 level, 1.97 level. Okay, so would I trade the pound kiwi? Not one of the pairs that I'm super interested in, just because looking at the kiwi dollar, um, it's trading higher, it looks like it's pushing up, but I could find a bit of a top side there before trading back down again so just be extra careful there on the pound kiwi okay all right so um let me just see would it be high risk to sell if it did not break um i would say that actually what i would prefer is that for it to break because if it doesn't break and it does turn down then there might actually be a very limited downside, right? Because the last time it broke below, it turned down from here, it come down to that 1.9120 level was back in September, unless it breaks that point. So I wouldn't do, I wouldn't sell it now. I would only look to see that if it does turn down and break below that support level, then I would be looking to sell down from that point about a, you know, 100 and then um, towards that level there. So I'll look for that as a big trade. Um, you can always put it to a nearer level there. You're look, still looking at a one is to three, but I wouldn't look to sell down from there. I'll look to, for it to break the next support before I would sell it down. All right. Hope I answer your question there, Gerard. Gerard. Okay, so now let's look at gold, Swiss franc, and euro pound. Gold. Gold, I love it. This was a trade that I had, a trade that I um, did very well on. All right. Is as gold came down and hit that 1615 level, right, in that area. I had it at 1617. Right, I got in at 1617. Why I like it so much is because you can see that the last time it got to this point, we saw a big shoot up towards this level, right? Towards that 1729 level. Right now, okay, it happened one more time again. It tested that level and we saw it shoot up towards that 1675 level. Right now it's tested has shot up, has broken above that resistance of 1666. What I'm looking for here is whether price of gold can trade up towards that 1729. Two things must happen. Well, two major things must happen here, right? Is one, the dollar would have to continue to weaken to push the gold price up, right? We'll have to see um, dollar weakening further to push gold price up. And two, price would have to break above. Do that. Right? Price would have to break above this 1686 level. Right? I would want price to break above this level before I would confirm or think about uh, further upside. Okay, so wouldn't do anything right now, but if you do see price break above 1686, maybe I'll be looking for further upside towards that 1729 resistance level. Um, do you guys see gold right now? Just want to make sure. Okay. Hang on, um, I just had something there. Someone's spamming us with stuff. So I'll just do that. Okay, good stuff. Um, so with that, let me look at the next one. So I'll answer your question there, Cathbert on gold. 
And then next on the US Swiss franc, look at that. The last time I spoke about a US Swiss franc, I said one top, two tops forms a double top. What do you expect with a double top, especially at a very key resistance level of 1.015 level, big rejection towards the downside. So we saw it happen once already, reject towards the downside, second time now on the way towards that level of one of 0 0.9857. Okay, so I'm looking for that push down towards this point. I wouldn't do anything right now. If you're looking at shorter term trades, let's say on H1, um, you could sell it down further, right? About a 20 pip stop loss, about a 40 pip take profit, a one to two towards the downside might be a little bit close um, in terms of selling it down. But I think that will possibly happen. What I would rather wait to do is for price to come down towards this 9857 support level, right? If it comes down, hits this level, dollar strength comes back into play, we could see this push back up, right? Push back up. If we see the DXY, go up, okay? However, if we don't see the dollar strength come back into play, we see um, maybe the Swiss National Bank talking about cutting, about increasing rates further, then you could see price break down. And then the next key support level would be at about 0 0.9744, 0 0.9745. Okay, so you have two options here, two ideas, two options here. Wait for it. Don't do anything yet. See a reaction at 9857. If it breaks from that point, you could sell it down. Tight stop loss, about 30 to 40 pips. Take profit, almost 90 pips towards the downside. Almost a one is to three, or one is to 2.5 towards the downside there on the US Swiss franc. If it hits and bounces from this support, then we'll be looking for a repeat of what happened. Previously, um, you could be looking for a buying opportunity. I wouldn't go all the way to the top. I would say you see a level of resistance there at 1.00. Stop loss tight, about 30 pips. You're looking at one is to 3.6 towards upside there on um, the US Swiss franc. Okay. All right, so let me go through. I see a lot of your requests coming in. I will get through them, so bear with me. Next one, Euro Pound. Okay, Euro Pound. Unfortunately, I'm, I've never been really excited or really keen on the Euro Pound because um, it does tend to trend and then break out and then trend and then break out. What I'm looking for here on the Euro Pound is for this break, for the break of that 0. 8715 level. All right. Why a break of this level? If the pound dollar does continue to strengthen, that's going to push the euro pound down. All right. But euro pound is not just made up of correlation with the pound dollar, it's also made up with correlation with the euro dollar. And if I show you very quickly what the euro dollar is doing, it's pushing towards the upside. Okay. So, what I think we're likely to see, since I'm here, I'm going to do a quick analysis on the euro dollar is that euro dollar could continue up towards that 1.0080 level right follow that trend towards upside hit that 1.0080 before turning back down right so if we do see that happen then again coming back to the euro pound then we we'll see this push towards the downside okay so not right now, but I'll wait for it to break below this 0.8715 before looking for some selling opportunities. Uh, I would be extra careful. I would say it needs to go below six, below 0.87. Okay, stop loss about 20 to 30 pips. Take profit towards the next level there, about 120, or even if you're a lot safer, you could say back to this level at about 70 to 80, you're looking at a one is to 
risk reward ratio towards the downside. So quite straightforward there on the euro pound, but I think that unless this is a pair that you're watching very closely, what tends to happen is you, you kind of miss the trade, right? It would just drop that strongly and then sit there and reverse back up. So this is about timing of um, looking at the euro pound. All right. Okay, so um, hope I answered your question there, Cathbird. Now let's look at Sumit's questions on the pound yen and the US yen. Um, hey, Carl. Yes, this is on uh, this chart is on Trading View. Okay, so US yen. Look at that. I did that again. All right. So we had a bit of a straddle there in the lead up to the news. Tested and rejected that one forty eight level turn down we're looking for that rejection to turn down right now as i clear out everything again it is at 146.52 146.52 the us yen has been a little bit odd is because despite all the volatility that we've seen it's now slowed down a lot right it's now slowed down a lot I think that we're going to see the US yen trade between 145.80, right? It's going to stay between 145.80 and possibly 148.40. Okay, I don't think we're going to see um, a big downward move beyond that point. We're going to see some tails and shadows, but what I'm looking for is for price to possibly stay within that range. So no big surprises there on the US yen for now. Right, unless we see some big movements on the um, dollar index, or we see some big movements on the um, from the Bank of Japan, okay, um, which makes it a lot easier to trade the other pairs. Because if we see the the US yen trades in a range, then the pound yen is going to be unaffected by the US yen with volatility driven mostly by the pound dollar, right? So currently at 167.81, right? I would say look for those levels there, okay? And also one at an interim level where it is right now, okay, at 168. So look for, you now this could be a quick trade that you might want to pay attention to is that, if the pound yen does break above that 168 level, could be, and the pound dollar does go up, continue to strengthen, then we could see a quick move and a very big move. Remember, pound yen is super volatile, um, a lot of price movements, a lot of volatility there. So, just, you know, I tend to have a bit of a wider um, stop loss, you know, size it down, have a wider stop loss gives you the ability to have a wider stop loss towards that take profit level of 172, okay? 172 as a take profit level, which le where to pay attention to in particular will be as you look to get in about 169.50 will be somewhere you know pay attention, whether it's going to continue trading higher. If it breaks above that point, then we could see quite a clear move towards the upside. Okay, hope you got it there, Sumit, on the pound yen and the US yen. I just did euro pound, I do US CAD. Let me just see, I'm missing. Fantastic, you're most welcome. All right, so um, what's next? Euro pound, we did euro CAD and US CAD. Euro CAD. Uh, you, okay, remember what we spoke about the euro dollar, we're looking for it to push a little bit higher, right, towards that 1.08 level or 1.080 level. So euro CAD, same thing. Before I look at euro CAD, let's look at US CAD first. The loony, right now trading lower, right, breaking below that 1.35 level. So I'll take these lines away for now. And then I like that 1.35 right there. Okay, so 1.35 right there. If I wouldn't say it's ready to sell down now, 
right? I'll wait for it to break or to close lower first. Then I'll look to sell down. And if I do sell this down, where's the next level? Where can it drop to? I would say about 1.33, right? You can see the last time you hit this levels, had a bit of a swing level there. So at about 1.33, it's an idea, I would say below 1.3460. Stop loss about a 50 pips, take profit 150. Uh, one is to three or one is to 2.4 towards the downside there on the US CAD. So with that, on the US CAD, possibly heading lower, a bit of strength coming onto the US CAD, then onto the Canadian dollar, then looking at the Euro CAD, I think that the Euro dollar has more drive to this. So key level here at 1.34, about 1.3480, about there. Um, if it does break above, then a few key levels to pay attention to here, okay? The first one at about 1.3560. And then the next one at the ultimate high of 1.3676. Okay, so break above. You could break this into two trades towards the upside. About a 60 pip take profit. Stop loss relatively tight, about 30. The one is to two towards the upside there. Then if it break, I would always suggest get out at that point because it's seen quite strong resistance. If it does break above that next resistance level, then again, look to buy 96 pips towards upside. Stop loss, again, about 30, quite close to a one is to three risk reward ratio towards upside there. Okay, so Kelvin, there you go. Euro pound, Euro CAD, US CAD. Um, okay, one guy asking about the Euro dollar as well. So that's done. Let me see where else. US CAD, Jamilu, we just did. US Yen, we just did as well. And then now let's look at the S&P. Where is my S&P? I've lost it. Oh. Here we go. Looking at the S&P, look at that. We were looking for that rejection as it rejected that 4,300 level. Turning down. I just did gold as well. Um, Salvador, I did gold as well. Okay, did I do gold? Yeah, I did. Okay, so now looking at this point right now, 3770. I think that if we do see the dollar index continue to weaken, if we see dollar index weakening, then we could see this push towards the upside might be a limited move towards the upside might be a little limited move towards upside because we do have a key resistance there at 3900 okay i don't i don't think it will break 3900 easily um, so i think unless i think it will climb up hit 39 and possibly turn back down again so i'll be looking for a similar move like that quite similar to what we saw here okay so quite straightforward there on the um, S&P. EuroCAD broke on the downside. Why are you going long? Um, EuroCAD did break. Where is it? Let's go back to that one again. EuroCAD did break, but the recent move, the recent move was a strong and right, climbed up from 1.33, almost 1.3300, right now at 1.34. Six seven, right? It's reversed um, since the move on Wednesday, so that's why I'm looking for it to break above that resistance towards the upside. All right. Um, Bitcoin. BTC. I was super excited about Bitcoin before, right? I was super about excited about Bitcoin. It's retraced from the. 21, almost 21,500 level towards the downside. So it's likely, I'll look at this on daily time frame. it's likely to continue at this point. Um, there has been talk that we might see 
a reversal because you see that break and then it's reversing. So it might trade back down again, right? So I think it could turn down from this resistance level of 20,000, almost 20,000 to 20,800. I think that we might be trapped in this range, possibly not so far away. I think we're trapped in the range in this levels here. Okay, so between 20,800 to 20,000 is possibly uh, where we have for Bitcoin. Hey guys, I just did gold. I did gold earlier, but let me just do a quick recap there for you guys. Is that it had been trading up, it's bounced off a key support level. I do think that we could see further upside on gold, but would be a little bit too early right now to get in. I would say I want it to break above this level, right? Oops. I would say that I want it to break above this level at a 61.8 Fib level, 1686 before I would look for further upside towards that 1729 key resistance level. All right, so still looking for the upside move, but it needs to break above that point. Uh, that's the, I wouldn't say it's the best setup. It's the setup that I've got right now for gold. If it does break above 1685, we could see further upside there. All right. <clears throat> okay, a couple more, Aussie and the Kiwi dollar. Let's look at the Kiwi dollar first. Um, I can... <coughs> tell you that Kiwi dollar, I have been buying it up. Um, today, I was trading the Kiwi dollar towards the upside, especially at about after lunch, about two o'clock. I saw that consolidation. I was thinking that it should break up, um, but as it came down and tested that 0 0.5870, I think I had it lower at about 5870 there, uh, tested, closed there, and then it bounced off, got into a couple of trades towards the upside. What I think could happen on the Kiwi dollar now is still a push towards that 5940 level, right? So I'll be looking for this to come up, test that level, but I think that once it tests that level, we might see a rejection back down again, right? So we might see a rejection. What I'm looking for is whether it could turn down and trade within this range, right? So I'll be looking for that move. Similar to what happened here on um, Friday, came up, hit this level, and then Monday turned back down. Similar to what happened here on Thursday with the news, you can see that the last time we broke above this level, back to the H4 time frame, drag it right across. Right, it was back in September where it broke down from this point. So quite a key, quite a strong resistance level there on the um, Kiwi dollar. So I'm looking for it to test, possibly break it a little bit, a fake break, possibly a fake break, before trading back down again. Okay, and with that, then we look at the Aussie dollar, very similar, but the resistance level on the Aussie slightly higher, right? So the key resistance at about 6.5, almost 6.550. It does seem like there's a little bit more space for the key Aussie dollar to climb higher, but you do have, <laughs> a couple of um, levels here to pay attention to. Okay, so you could still be looking to buy it up. You could still be looking to buy it up even from this current point here with about a 60, 70 pip take profit near term. I wouldn't do this. This is a one is to one. Um, I wouldn't, you know, after looking at the risk to reward there, the risk management, I probably wouldn't look to buy it up. I would just say, let it hit that 6550 level, see what happens, look for it to reject that level and turn down. Or if it does break above that resistance level, then we could see further upside towards 6673.
All right. Update my review on pound dollar. Okay, give me a second there. Uh, what's the general strategy for gold for intraday? I I wouldn't do gold on an intraday. I don't do gold on a short, super short term. Um, I prefer gold on a slightly medium term just because it's super volatile. So it's easier, you know, just to ride the wave, ride the fluctuations, trade it more on the longer term. I think that'd be a lot safer on gold. Okay. How do you identify a fake break? Um, a fake break, what there is hard to identify a fake break in particular, but there are ways that you can um, protect yourself with a fake break is that you start considering areas on your support or resistance levels instead of just one line. So you don't react to price when it breaks above a line. You react to price when it breaks above a, an area. So that gives you a little bit more breathing space to consider and to think about um, and also to avoid a fake break, right? So a bit of margin there um, to avoid the fake break. Um, reviewing on pound dollar, uh, Swiss, yeah, okay, we'll do CHF, JPY. Do I even have that? There we go. You know, okay, I don't think I have it. Do I have it? No. All right, so CHF, JPY, trading up, as we were saying about the um, upside move on, no, well, we were talking about the range on the yen, right? And we're talking about the Swiss franc possibly trading, you know, at that level could trade lower. Oh, I lost it. Um, so looking at the CHF, JPY, I'm thinking that we could, with a key level here, another one at that point. Um, and then I would say another consolidation area about there, right? So it's climbing up towards that 148.48 .48 level. Wouldn't do anything right now. I would say look for a reaction at this resistance level, right? If price does break above, then we could see a retest quite similar to what happened here, right? Or are we looking for a rejection like that for it to come up, test, and turn down? Uh, at this point, because the Swiss franc is quite, the volatility on the Swiss franc is quite driven by the dollar index, it all really depends on what could happen on the dollar, okay? It did move a lot. It did climb from that 146 uh, 14 to right now 147 could it has to test that resistance level before we're going to see um, any move the next move right so i think it will continue momentum will push it up towards 148 48 and then possibly test that level um, do we have a cash reward for we, your audience or maybe plans to include it not right now. I don't. I don't. I haven't been told about any cash rewards. But um, you know, I will. I will feed back to the team, and we can see what happens there. All right. Good idea. We could um, feed back that. Okay. So I had a question on the. I'll do two more. I'll do a quick review on the pound dollar, and then as Steffi just asked on the US thirty. Well, actually, pound dollar not much to review. It is breaking that level. Not ready yet. Um, still wait for it, but I think that we could still see the upside move to test 1.1640 um, in the current period. Kelvin, we just did pound dollar and euro dollar a lot earlier as well. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. And then lucky last US 30. That's straightforward. Uh, we could see this test, oops, that near term resistance level you know as the dollar weakens could or should be pushing this <coughs> towards the upside so you know but i don't think you can see that as we scroll out the last time we broke above those levels was back in august especially if i drag this right across you can see there 
right? The last time it broke above this level was in August. I think that at this point, we're likely to see it come up, test that 31, uh, 33, 100 level. And then um, possibly we might see that dollar strength come back into play and this push back down again. Okay, so I'm looking for that move to happen. All right. Thank you, Ethian. I hope you guys um, have enjoyed the session. I, we've gone through a lot, a lot of trade ideas. Um, if you have missed out on any, any of those, I think some of you have, um, please check out the channel. All right, I'll put in the channel there again for you guys. There's a lot of other content in there as well. Um, with all that said, remember, trade well trade safe and we'll catch you again take care now bye bye you're most welcome guys <laughs>